Lakeland Public Television presents Currents with host Ray Gildow. Sponsored by Nisswa Tax Service, offering tax preparation for individuals and businesses across from the City Hall in Nisswa and on the web at nisswatax.com. Hello again everyone and welcome to Lakeland Currents where today we're going to talk about a very unique program in the Staples Motley School District. It wasn't that long ago that vocational and technical and career education was a big part of all the public education. But there's been a sea change from the 70s until our current time where a lot of those programs don't exist. They don't exist in K-12 systems and they've actually been taken out of a lot of our two-year colleges across the country too which is creating huge shortages in America for the technical programs, the trade programs. When we talk about trades, it could be anything from a block layer, a brick layer, a carpenter, mechanics. Those whole fields are absolutely wide open, begging for help. So it's kind of really refreshing to see a school district that's making a commitment to start doing something to address those problems. And that's what the Connections High School is doing in the Staples Motley area. So my guests today are the principal, Mike Schmidt, who's been on our show a couple of different times in a couple of different areas. Mm -hmm. Chris Trout, who's one of the instructors at the program. Mm -hmm. And then one of the students in the program, Katie Flansberg. So welcome to all of you. And Mike, maybe we could kick it off with you and you could give us a background about what this high school is. Because sure. it's a high school with a high school. We are. It? We are two high schools under one roof. And that's, <clears> that, again, makes us unique in that regard as well. And really, Connection started off as a concept years ago, long before I arrived in Staples, about doing, being a charter school and working in collaboration with Central Lakes College. And as CLC went through some of their changes and their adjustments, as MinSQ continues to do, um, the teaching staff at Staples Motley really wanted to stay the course with this. And it became a great partnership not only between some of our, our greatest teachers within the district, um, but also with Central Lakes College still and our Bridges Academies that are uh, very popular in the Lakes area. And it's very career technical oriented, uh, project based learning. And basically what it is is the core subjects are taught in a very non-traditional manner where the student through their projects meet the state standards as opposed to a, a bell system of an hour of English, an hour of science, an hour of math. They're still meeting those standards and they work towards their diploma like a regular high school, if you will, but it's just project-based learning and it's very hands-on, career technical oriented education. Let's just, for our viewers who might not know that term, uh, just what is it, the academies, the, the Bridges Academies? That sure, about? we've got, oh, there's, <laughs> there's a lot. We have one that's around medical and nursing and we have a welding academy. We have some fabricatings as well. We also have uh, some different trades in there, and the, the most recent, which is unique to our area, is a culinary academy that's preparing our students to work and manage and be a part of restaurants, resorts, so forth and so on. And, and when they leave our high school and they go through the academies, they're awarded not only the credits in high school, but credits towards continuing that education at Central Lakes College directly. And, and these academies are located across central Minnesota, aren't they? They are. Many high schools have them, but we found it as a real way to just cr provide the nucleus to Connections High School. Now, you are, uh, obviously we have open enrollment, so you can mm -hmm. take students from anywhere. Yes. H how many students are in currently enrolled in your program? In, at the 29. 29? Mm -hmm. And is that about where you're trying to max out because of your staffing? Yeah, actually we would have room. You know, last year we were pretty much maxed out and we had more towards the 40. Um, and we want to continue to grow. Um, and so we'll be looking at doing that. But w we are in one big room and, and 40 is a room full. So that's, you know, for the short term, that is our goal. So all of your projects occur in one room? You're not integrated in the school, uh, others, the rest of the school building. We really are a hybrid, and that's why it's so nice to be located um, and partnered with Staples Motley High School because our kids can go out and take um, some um, elective classes in the high school. So a lot of our kids take advantage of our great music program, and they might go out for music, but then they come back and they do their core classes with the project-based learning within that one room. Um, now when I say that, we do have some study rooms and other places where they go to work, but when we're all together, we're all in the one big classroom, yes. So how does the emphasis become on technical and career education as opposed to just going to the normal high school? How do you, how do you determine that with students? I think we had a student last year that really 
gave us, he was the, the purest look at what we set out to do. And he was a young man that open enrolled into our district and he was just simply, he was a hands-on kid that was into fabrication of metal, cars, body work. He graduated high school via our shops, working with, working with the projects that he wanted to do and the core subjects that allowed him the freedom, if you will, to today I'm going to work on this, tomorrow I need to finish this, and on Wednesday I might start back on this. So it really allows the fluidity for the students grades 9-12 uh, through their choice of where they think they want to go. And I think that's the emphasis is does, does any teenager really know where they're going to finish in life? No. But we wanted to provide a stronger pathway through those Bridges Academies and through our technical courses and our career-centered courses for the kids to be able to have that freedom. And we do a lot of uh, do a lot of things outside of school. We take the kids out into a lot of field trips, a lot of work site uh, visits, um, really getting them out into the workforce so they can meet and uh, experience that as well. And how big is your staff in this school? Currently, Chris Trout, and we have a, a she is full time, as is uh, one, her teaching assistant, and then Carrie Lindgren, Donna Besselin, Lisa Kyer uh, are our core. T a group of teachers that do the career technical piece of it and then we bring in additional resources from Staples Motley High School to oversee the science math and language arts curriculum. So those teachers also cross over into the other high mm -hmm. school so yeah. they don't yes. just work in the Connections pro program. Correct. So when a student parents come to you in the fall and they want to sign up a student are there special requirements to get into your program? No, I let Chris speak to that. No, really, we are a, we are a public <clears throat> school, and of course, um, you know, when you talk about open enrollment, that's a a good thing. Um, we welcome that, but it's a transportation issue, you know. So you need to be able to get to school every day. Um, but we, um, as a public school, you know, we say come check it out see what we have to offer and and see if you think this would be a good fit so we are not selective as in oh you have to have certain qualifications no but we want you to take a look at what we have and and um, really consider if this would be a so good do you have students from other school districts that are in your program yes mm -hmm. and Katie you are a freshman yes and how did you make the decision yourself that you wanted to get into this sort of program? Well, I think I work better by myself and then I like to know exactly what I need to do to get everything done and to work at my own pace helps a lot. So I just thought it would be good. So if I'm a parent and, and let's say I'm Katie's father, and I come to your program and you say, now we meet all the standards in English, all the standards in math, mm -hmm. uh, whatever the other standards are, reading, whatever they are. How do you exhibit to the parent that they're learning these things? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, when a student does a project, they start out by asking specific questions of themselves and they set their own goals. This is what I want to learn and then they go through the steps of doing a project, but then when they're done, they have a product when they're done, which could be a variety of things, and through that product, they have to show that they've answered the specific questions, you know, whether it's, um, you know, what happened in the War of 1812, because I'm the history teacher, or um, how does the scientific theory work? You know, I, they have to show the teacher the answer to those questions and their final product and sometimes it might be a test as part of their final product but certainly not all the time that's that's how they show what they've learned and that's what they're graded on so they get a traditional um, grade and report card like any other student they'll have a transcript when they're done and, and it's graded on the products that they produce from their project Katie I can put you on the hot seat here for a minute could you could you give us an example of a couple of the projects that you do and, and how maybe not just the project that you do but how the other things you're learning come into play there? Okay, so like for example, I just did a science project which um, consisted of three different standards, the water cycle, water reservoir, and then the oceans. So I did a poster that it showed the oceans and 
then how the water cycle contributed it to the earth. And then I explained what a water reservoir is. And then my science teacher, he asked me different questions and I had to answer them. So it, I mean, it, you can work at your own pace and then do what you think is a good job and then ha get questioned. Now, do you have to have a certain number of projects completed during the course of the year? Yeah, um, usually for each different, um, like for science, you have to have five different standards done for each quarter. And you could have, let's say, two projects and complete all five standards, or you could have five different projects. Now, when you say standards, tell us what you mean by that. I'm not clear what you mean by that. Um, so... Um, I don't mean to be putting it on your spot. Yeah. And, and Chris can help you if you, if you need to. Um, I think the standard is just from the state, and it ex it's making sure you understand <clears throat> each different thing. Like, I need to understand what a water reservoir is to complete the standard. Right, and for us, we so that would be a, that. What would be the the overriding standard? What would sure. that be called? So, uh, so we would go to the Minnesota Department of Ed, and they have a physical science standard, and um, and that's where we base our expectations from. And for me, again, I do social studies, so I do go to the Minnesota Department of Ed. You know, you have the list of state standards, and these are their expectations, and so that's what we pass on the students when they start. They have they get the expectations, these are your standards, and so when we help them brainstorm about projects, we consult that a lot and say, okay, how are you going to show these different, these different standards? And, and you know, we guide them along the way, and we help them be creative, um, sometimes very creative, and sometimes, you know, a, a poster with an explanation is, is enough. But I, what Katie was talking about, um, <clears throat> they do their standards and then they present them and a lot of times we'll say, well, this is great, we like this, you need to find out more about this topic here. So we send them back to do a little bit more work on their project and then they'll present it again. So do, do you find that most of the students who come into this program have a um, stronger interest in the career and technical issues than students in the traditional high school or do you just find that they're more certain of who they are and what they want to do. I think it's a blending of both and I think one of the, the strongest qualities Connections offers is the curiosity of the student is reinforced. It, it, they're just there are no, it's limitless and uh, last year we had a group of students that worked directly with one of our businesses in town to fabricate and make the tables, the workstations for the students. Oh, wow. That became a part of their standards based uh, education, their projects, their math, their, their career path that they were on, and it's just invaluable to be able to go into a shop one-on-one -on -one with an owner that, they, they were our students very much so, they were expected to be there on time. They had to follow his shop rules and etiquettes. If guests came into the shop, they were expected to represent accordingly, and these are the freedoms that Connections has really offered, and, and I think the misconception for Connections is that the word alternative has been used already in education. It already has a placeholder, and Connections is an alternative way to deliver the standards. It is by no means an alternative high school. It, is, it requires a strong, independent student to be able to take on, if you will. Anyone that has teenagers knows sometimes if you give them the rope, they're going to go, they, you know, they, they may do themselves in with the rope, if you will. Um, Katie ha is a great example of a poised freshman that has come into our high school that has said, this, this is who I am, this is where I think I want to go, and we've got the freedom to allow her to do that. And, and that's one of the real benefits. So for clarification, it's, it is not an ALC. And that was one of those things that... Which has a lot of negative <clears throat> connotations. Uh, I, you know, I prefer looking at ALC as... Uh, it, I think, unfortunately, in society, yes. I think it's mm -hmm. become an acronym. But um, I've also worked with and alongside <laughs> of ALCs where they simply are... Uh, they're, sometimes they're based on uh, lifestyle needs of our students. I think in, in outstate Minnesota, um, Connections has just become one of those great alternatives uh, for, a, for a family or a student to look at a different way to educate their, their child. Yep. Can I jump in? <clears throat> um, and I have worked at the local ALC and I, ha you know, I have great respect for this school. But one of the things with the ALC, they really work with the students in their schedules. And um, 
one of the things at Connections is that we do have a commitment to um, preparing kids for the workforce, so we have pretty high expectations so around... So that is part of your expectations, mm -hmm. you're going to try to get them into the workforce? Mm -hmm. Right. Or, or post-secondary training for the so workforce. So they have advanced yes. training. Mm -hmm. Yes. So attendance is really something we hammer home a lot. And along with this, just to back up a little bit, we are in the middle of um, starting a new Bridges Academy mm -hmm. at Through Connections, and it's a Career Exploration Academy. And so um, some of the requirements of that is that the students have to take some career and tech ed classes, which happen at the high school. I just want to I want to stress that. So our career in tech ed classes are still at the main campus of the high school, but they um, are required to take classes in different career in tech ed areas so that they are exploring all their options while they're receiving their uh, Bridges Academic Certificate. If I'm a student and I come into your school, yes. And I've got a strong interest in, in mechanics. Right. So would I, could I have the option of going to Donlinger or Nia Chevrolet and working out a program where if they would be willing to let me into mm -hmm. their shop, I could come in and do projects in their shop? Is that something that you do? Well, right. that would be exciting. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't as of yet, but yes. the example of the, the local shop owner, absolutely. That would absolutely. be allowed, though, by the school. And, and I think one of the things through the, the career and technical education push that you talked about in the intro and then the world's best workforce, college career readiness, that's very much what it is. It is a generation of employees and workforce that is out there currently saying, we're, we're not seeing the next generation come. They're realizing they're having to connect with the high school student versus wait for the student to come to them. And I think that's one of the big pluses. You know, when we, there's a lot of high school, there's a lot of people that believe if we just built a house in the back of the high school, we'd learn a trade. There's more to the trade than building of the house. And this has been a great way to offer uh, different opportunities to students locally through those connections. We used to build those houses yep. which nope. behind I, almost every high school. Uh, you got it. And a lot of those students went on into the trade. Right. Which, um, you know, a lot of employers are upset now because they don't see kids coming out of school with any of those fundamental skills. Mm -hmm. And it, I think your point about being on time and being there is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to some of our larger employers in central Minnesota, they will tell you it's not uncommon to hire a, a young person and not even have them there for the first paycheck. They don't even come back. Full day, right. And, and so the, t having that ethic taught is a very, very critical thing. If you, um, you interact with all the other students, Katie, in, yep. in the high school, because you're a high school within a high school, yep. essentially. Do, do they you know, ask you a lot of questions? Are they curious to what you're doing there? Do they think it's something they would be interested in? Or where are they at with that? Well, I do have a couple of friends who are actually very interested in it because they don't think the normal uh, high school is working out for them as they wished. So I've been talking to them and explaining what Connections is and how it's done. And they are talking to their parents and maybe are going to join. So it's, I don't know. So you're a freshman this year. Yes. Do you see yourself staying in this program for four years? Definitely. So you're really yeah. excited about what it does for you? Yeah. And then do you see yourself getting into more sophisticated kinds of projects as you get older? Most definitely. Yeah? Cause what, are, what are some of the things that's, that you're thinking about right now? Well, like for like different projects or what I yeah, want to do? Yeah, for different projects. As, as, if, if, when you come back next year as a sophomore, what are some of the things that maybe you'd like to do? Well, for like different, like let's say like health standards, maybe I could like volunteer at like a care center maybe, and then kind of do a project on something revolving around the care center. So it's more interactive rather than just drawing a poster, so. It seems to me that this school would be a great opportunity for our students to go out and shadow some of the yep. businesses mm -hmm. that are in the area and say, I'd be maybe interested in working with you, mm -hmm. maybe not full-time, but maybe sometime yep. full-time, but maybe even after high school, um, go to the vet clinic and see maybe I want to be a vet tech. 
I know we've had uh, over the years people who have gone to the nursing programs and have gone into the actual nursing settings and mm -hmm. said, whoa, it's not for me, there's too yeah. much blood, keep me out of that. Yeah. But it's a, I look at uh, being in education all of my life, I look at how many young people have spent so much money in areas that they had really no interest in. Mm -hmm. They just didn't know it. Yeah. And you wouldn't buy a new car, a $50,000 car without trying it out. Mm -hmm. Why would you go to a, a college or why would you go into an industry when you have no idea what it is? So I think that this opportunity, this school would give you that real good opportunity <laughs> to do that. <laughs> Sorry, one of the things I'm excited about too is right now we've partnered with the Workforce Center mm -hmm. and we do have a youth career advisor who comes once a week and, and she's working with some of the students just to make some of those internships happen. And I, again, just she's, um, she meets with them individually to make sure that they have uh, you know, a plan in place and, and giving them opportunities, you know. You were going to say something. Right? I, I do. I think that's one of the benefits to the nine twelve small school look for connections. There's there's an intimacy to, to their main classroom. They get to know their students, and through that, their soft skills, their ability to communicate. Now what do you mean by soft skills? Yeah, the soft skills, build, the ability, the ability to do what we're doing right now. Talk to one another, explain, um, get your ideas out there, heard. Um, uh, how to dress, how to take care of oneself, how to get there on time. Uh, on time, you know, I've always been an early is on time kind of guy. Uh, well, I try to be anyways. <laughs> but uh, no, those are the skills that when, when 10 years ago, every high school student was going to college. I think, the, I think as a country we learned, that, no, they're not. And we overlooked a large population of students and what they needed. And that's really what connections, uh, really kind of set itself up on and ba and what what a compliment to it to start a new high school than to build it based on the reputations of your current educators that say this this is what we think we need for our kids and I think that's the one of the big testimonies uh, to the staff that is there is you you don't take on a new veteran at education without it being w with the credibility of those that are involved mm -hmm. and uh, their ideas have stuck connections now three years ago we were a new idea now we're becoming what everyone's talking about that they need so more of their high school. So this is your third year in third operation? Year. Yep. Yes. And how many graduates have you had through the three years now? 20. 20? Because mm -hmm. obviously a lot well, of them started as underclassmen, so they weren't right. going through that program. Right, so we've gone through two graduating <clears throat> classes. <clears throat> okay, yep. and what do students have to do to get in trouble in this program? Not or maybe. don't they, they even get in trouble? No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> what some of the concerns as staff we talk about is, yeah. are they making progress, you know, towards those state standards that at the end we have to have these state standards met? And so we're constantly talking to the kids. Are you, you know, let's take a look. We use a great um, computer program, Project Foundry, that, te that tracks their standards. And are you on track to be done at the end of four years, are you getting your physical science standards done so that you know? Attendance so is that an issue if they don't show up? Yes. But what happens if they would be removed from your your high school? They would then be in a place where they would be in what I would I would blanket it as a place of credit recovery if they're to enter another like high any school. other student. And I miss it. You, when you asked about trouble, I immediately went to the principal hat of well, <laughs> kids kids do make interesting choices. <laughs> um, no, as far as trouble, I think one of the things about connections, it's very traditional in what I think generations of people felt high school was all the way through. It was about attendance. It was about effort, attitude. Don't delay. You cannot procrastinate in connections. You've got to be on task working each and every day, every hour. And I think that's why someone like Katie, sometimes the traditional look of you have to wait for the bell to ring to go to my next class. She chooses when to do that in connections. So Katie, how many traditional classes do you go to in the course of your normal day? So it depends on like if I have certain projects started in different classes. So one day I might work completely on science because I need four more standards to make sure I meet my um, deadline by the end of the quarter. Or some days I might work on science, history, and language. I mean, it kind of depends so on... You, but you're not in any traditional English no. classes? Where no. you attend those? No. But how about if you wanted to join choir or band? Do you then go you'd out? have to set those oh, blocks do you aside. Go out yeah, I am in Spanish and band. So for Spanish one, I need to go with 
the grade, like ninth grade. So that would be a certain hour. So you have hour. to set that time aside in your schedule right. so you go to there. Okay, I yeah. see what you're saying. Yeah. Yep. And my band. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's going back and forth from really how you really want to learn yeah. to the traditional mm -hmm. classroom setting where everybody's still sitting there listening for yep. for 45 minutes or whatever. That's interesting. Um, so next year, it will be your fourth year mm -hmm. and you are still trying to grow a little bit. Yeah. How is this being received by neighboring school districts? That, those are always touchy issues and I'm not trying to get you into things that you don't need to talk about. Well, I think even within our own district at first there was a lot of people, you know, that had concerns, is this going to take away from our right. district? But I think, I feel safe in saying, I think it's people see that um, we, we do have high standards and, and it's working well for some students. Mm -hmm. I think we're getting more and more support all the time. I haven't visited with anybody in an outside district to get their take on it, but I just think within our community anyways, um, I think we have a lot of support. And so you run this through your board the way you do would do mm -hmm. a regular school district through your superintendent. Yep. And do you have pretty good support from your board? We do. I think any time in education you introduce, it, this has changed. This was new. So there was, there's mm -hmm. always a lot of black and white and some details and some of it is still learning on the go very much. But we have, um, one of the challenges at Staples Motley was to increase our open enrollment into the district and Connections High School without question has done that very successfully. It's a really interesting concept. Um, Katie, they picked a good example of a good student, I think. Thank you. <laughs> it sounds like you've uh, got a pretty darn good idea where you're going to go. There's a whole room full of them like her at Oh, that's good. Like that's good to hear. Yeah. So if, we've got 30 seconds, but if they want to find out more about this, can they go to the Staples Motley yes. web, yep. uh, website? Staples Motley School's website and call our district office. We'll be happy to set up a tour. Connections well, High School has their own website, too. So I'm going to take a, that. a day and come over and visit you sometime. That would be just wonderful. want to see the place. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate yeah. it very Thank much. You. Again, that's the Connection High School at Staples Motley School District. You've been watching Lakeland Currents, where we're talking about what you're talking about. I'm Ray Gildow. So long until next time.